Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And I have to admit, I think I thoroughly underestimated, underestimated even. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired right now, I can't even form words. The amount of time that it was going to take me to be able to get through Wargaming's Mission Marathon on my free-to-play account. Yeah, I thought that it would probably take me about 45 hours. I hope you heard that on the microphone, because... I feel like I almost need to do it again. I think it's probably going to end up taking me more like about 16. Or if I play really badly, possibly even more. Um, yeah, that's a pretty daunting fact. But I have to admit, I'm going at it full-heartedly. Yesterday, I ended up streaming for about 10, 10 or 11 hours because I finally completed stage 4. And then I unlocked the premium day and I wanted to make the absolute most out of it. And i'll be damned if i didn't i made a huge amount from that premium day i i managed to un unlock a load of modules on some vehicles and get them fully elite so i've now got the the tier 6 italian tank the tier 6 polish vehicle um as well as also a kv3 pretty much fully elite although i don't have the 122 millimeter guns on the on the kv3 yet so whether that's going to be a fun tank to play with the 107 millimeter is another question uh, one thing i've been finding with this is that I've actually been, I don't know, in some ways I kind of am enjoying it because I'm back to playing World of Tanks where I'm unlocking things and I'm back to playing World of Tanks where it's a struggle. And when things are a struggle, when things go well, boy does it feel good, right? And in this kind of a game, this, this was an amazing feeling for the Tier 6 Italian Tank Destroyer. Um, the IKV-65-2. Now I'm trying to do Tank Destroyer Mission 15 while we were doing this. And to be able to do, do Tank Destroyer Mission 15, you have to do 2,000 damage, get 2 kills, and you also have to win the battle. That might not sound very hard if you're playing a, a, a Tier 8 Tank Destroyer, even a Tier 10 Tank Destroyer. For some Tank Destroyers, that's 2 shots. Not hard at all, right? But when you're playing a Tier 6 Tank Destroyer like this, and you have 330 meters base view range, and you don't have fully maxed out crew skills, oh, I didn't even have concealment rating on the vehicle on some of my crew members at this time. It does get rather ugly indeed. Now I managed to win quite, well, I managed, sorry, I managed to lose, but do 2,000 damage quite a few times while I was doing this. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, cranky baby, why are you trying to do missions as well as also doing a marathon, as well as also doing it on your free-to-play account? Are you, are you truly masochistic? Well, possibly, possibly I might be, ladies and gents. But one thing I realized is that if I do manage to get through the, the, the Stuck, which, I, uh, spoilers, I've actually unlocked. Oh, no, that's going to kind of spoil the outcome of this battle. But when I've unlocked the Stug, that means that I can also start the missions for the T-28 HTC. And it's not really about wanting to unlock the T-28 HTC, as much as it is that there's huge credit rewards for completing the missions. But if you manage to complete the second set of personal missions, the first season to be able to get towards the T-20 HTC, if you do some of the missions with honors, and some of them are rather easy to do, you're talking about making like 150,000 credits, if not more, just from completing a single mission. And on a free-to-play account, that's the equivalent of playing for an hour, or an hour and a half, or even two hours, religiously, without firing any premium rounds. And so I'm, I'm making use of these, these credit bonus that you get from completing uh, the, the, the personal missions, the, the campaign, to be able to afford to unlock vehicles to help me accelerate up the, up the tech tree. Now, do I really want to accelerate that far up the tech tree? Well, well probably not. I mean, at, at one stage, I was thinking that I was going to have to get to Tier 7 before I was able to actually manage to, to complete this mission. But luckily, I did manage to nail it in this game and had a bit of a kind of like a, a fist bump moment. And then that's one of the things that I've, I've been really kind of enjoying a little bit. I have to admit, at first, it was ugly. At first, while I was playing this, I was thinking, oh, why am I not really managing to achieve everything first time, first time, first time? And then reality set in that when you're playing free to play, it's actually quite tricky. And consequently, that means that when you do manage to pull off something miraculous, then it feels even the more impressive. Now, I was wondering what this tiger gentleman was doing. Why, why, is he, maybe he's just examining the, uh, the scenery of Runeberg there. It always surprises me when people kind of want to drive at right angles rather than, you know, just take the direct route. Maybe you can... Anyway, let's not go there. We'll have to see if that tiger makes a bit of a, a reoccurrence in the video a bit later on. But now I'm playing the T-150, fully elite with the 107mm, this thing just feels like an absolute beast. And when you do get it on Runeberg, this is definitely one of the more favourable maps for this tank. 
Now my T-150 has definitely been one of my go-to tanks for regaining some sanity during this free-to-play marathon because when you're trying to play stock KB-3 and you're driving around what feels like slower than a TOG and when you get there you, you don't really have all of those low-tier tanks to play around with. It just feels rather awkward to be um, trundling along in that tier 7 Soviet heavy and so you need something as a bit of a, a pick-me-up and that's something that I've been realizing for um, this free-to-play account as well is that when you are grinding stock tanks something that in in recent years I've all but forgotten to do so because I, I managed to save up enough free experience just by playing the game even without converting that I can use that when a new tech tree comes out and so I don't even really have to experience most of the vehicles without fully upgraded modules Although I've actually been taking it upon myself to make sure that recently when I've been, been playing on my, my pay to win count or my premium account, whatever you want to be calling it, that I have been playing some of the tanks without modules. For example, the, the recent tier 9 a wheel vehicle. Um, I managed to play the EBR 90 without the top gun on the tank just to either experience it, but also because you don't really need to dump the 40,000 experience. So it's made me really think about investing free experience wisely. And I honestly think that one of the best ways to invest free experience that you guys save up just by playing the game as you get 5% to standard. And yes, thank you very much, Mr. Tiger, for continuing to push me around the corner there while I'm trying to aim at the OI, is to actually increase the mobility of the vehicle. Now, some vehicles have got mobility as standard. And so that means that you don't really need to be able to, to, to spend your free experience to increase their mobility and you're, you're better to get guns. But on some of the tanks, tanks which you have fairly good guns to begin with, for example, my KV-3, I really wish I'd dumped the free experience on the engine and then followed it up with it, uh, experiencing the tracks on that vehicle because the mobility was just absolutely horrific. All right, so we managed to finish off the OI despite this tiger pushing me around the corner and he thanks me. <laughs> Can you believe it? Mr. Drives at right angles, Tiger, actually obviously like, oh, that was my kill. You stole my kill, T-150. Let, let's not forget that I did the majority of the, the damage to the OI, or at least it felt like I did at the time. Apparently that, that was not meant to be my kill. And I think the Tiger was letting me know that by trying to, to damage my tank a little bit. Okay, Mr. Tiger, well, maybe you haven't been pushing me around the corner so much. Um, I would have let you get the kill. No, I wouldn't have let me get the kill because the OI is a blooming dangerous tank that I'm not going to allow to, to sit out in the open. And so what I was trying to achieve by playing the T-150 during this game is that I was trying to do Heavy Tank Mission 15 with honors. And that is that you have to block, receive and cause 4,000 damage and you have to deal 20% of the total damage that your, your team cause and you have to win the battle. And if I was able to do this one, then, you know, fanfare, sound, and we would manage to, to unlock that Stug 4 and then progress towards the T20HTC. Now, progressing towards the T20HTC wasn't really so useful for my heavy vehicles because I was still trying to do this mission. But one thing that's really irritating is that once you've completed all the medium tank missions for the, for the Stug, for example, you can't move on to do them for the T20HTC. And so it was kind of really holding me back from getting probably about a million credits worth of mission complete completions on my medium tanks purely because I couldn't quite finish the HT-15 and the TD-15 that you, you might be seeing me complete in this, in this video, possibly, maybe. Are we going to be able to block the remaining 674 damage? Or, of course, I could deal that amount of damage. Or I could just take the damage as well. Man, I remember doing um, Heavy Tank Mission 15 for the Object 260 back in the day, and I was just absolutely loving that bounce by the Hellcat because you see the counter at the top of the screen go up. Oh, that was such a feels-good moment. Something that this this free-to-play account has been rewarding me with as well. I'm, I'm, I'm getting definitely getting back into, into touch with what the feels-good moments of World of Tanks are. And this shell. If we connect the shell, there you go. Bam! I don't even have to survive the battle. All I have to do is win the battle. And I was thinking my team were easily going to win this in a 1 versus 6 scenario. So I was jumping for joy, but not quite enough to be able to, to feed the challenge of my death. So I'm still going to try and side scrape around the corner here and see if I can manage to take on the tier 7 British tank destroyer. There he is. Are we going to connect the shell to the top of the turret? Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And the T-150, 3,200 damage, 1,000 spotting and tracking, and 5 kills in, in not exactly the worst matchup, but, you know, plus 1 matchmaking. Oh, this was just a, an awesome feeling right now. And this was the first 
game that I played yesterday, and it all went you know, downhill after this, for sure, during those 11 hours of grinding towards this mission marathon. And oh yeah, this one was meeting the T-150, 3,176 experience, that's without a premium account, albeit that it's doubled because that is 1,000 588 base and even without that premium account 34,000 credits profit poor money in the bank but you know what all of those games they look like a, a breeze in the park right you might be asking what serious challenges have you been presented with in this in this free-to-play marathon and how have you managed to overcome them well yeah how about this i'm playing a kv3 and right now i think that all i have on this vehicle is the top engine even if i have the top engine you're plus two matchmaking. You're, you've got a tank, a T-10 versus a KV-3. What in hell's name are you meant to be able to do to be able to, to, to contest that vehicle? Unless you, you dab the two key and just start spamming premium rounds at the vehicle and lose all the credits that you've been playing so darn tight in all of your lower tier tanks to be able to get, ladies and gents. You know, you, you, you poke up. You get locked down by multiple heavy tanks. Your tier 9s refuse to want to push through the gap and to be able to take on the, the high tier Soviet heavy tank behemoth, you know? You, uh, one man can only be pushed so far. And after playing World of Tanks for 10 hours free to play, you know, you, you have to be, get a little bit creative, right, ladies and gents? So maybe you might be seeing where I'm going here. And once more into the breach, KV3 once more as we ram this T-10 from above, instant landing for 1,263 damage. And you know what, enemies, you can have that frag. You can do whatever you want, Mr. Black Prince, to finish off my beautiful KV-3 wreck. And there you go, the allies push forwards. On to victory, my friends, once more, as the Object 263 now takes the frontal position to be able to quell the enemy team. And the plays for three, KV3, is firmly on top of this plus two matchmaking, right? Yeah, well, maybe, possibly. Yeah, if, if this was a film, that, that would probably be what happens, but... <laughs> And my team go on to lose this game. Yeah, sometimes there's just nothing that you can do. And despite heroic efforts, <laughs> you're just destined to fail. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below how you are doing in this this wheeled marathon as wargaming are calling it what stage are you up to now i'm halfway through stage six i think myself i'm about to start grinding again after this video is finished have you already given up or are you going to try and finish this through to the end and as always best of luck thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon